very pleased to welcome our presenter today. She's someone that I just got to know a few years ago. Her name is Amy Cole, and she is in charge of digital learning and digital media for the University of Arkansas Division of Agriculture Cooperative Extension Service. Amy's title today is Evaluation of Social Media Platforms for Extension Outreach and Education. And one of the things that I personally appreciate and professionally appreciate about Amy is while a lot of us have worked here for a while, uh, and certain of us have worked here longer than others, uh, Amy brings a fresh perspective to extension education and the use of digital media. She worked in the private sector and she learned, worked with diverse organizations and corporations in developing digital media strategies. So for coming to extension just a couple of years ago, a real gift to the University of Arkansas, and it's our pleasure to share that gift with you today. So I want to uh, welcome Amy and look forward to what she has to share with us. The other thing I would say is Amy is a plethora of information. So if you have some questions that are just kind of floating out there that you've always wanted an answer to, please use the Q&A box right now and as she's covering content. And Amy and I will discuss those questions at the end of her presentation. So please don't wait till the end and, and think, oh, I wish I'd asked that. This is your chance to uh, interact with someone who's got a, a breadth of experience uh, that we can all learn from. So welcome, Amy. Thank you, Karen. Good morning, everybody. I'm so glad everybody could join us today. All right. I think we're just about ready to get started. And I have a lot of slides, a lot of information. I was trying to cover several different topics, including analytics for some of these platforms. And so we are going to hold all the questions to the end. I believe uh, Karen's going to take care of all of our question organizing for us today. So if you have any questions, feel free to hold them. Um, I'm not going to guarantee I have the answers to them, all of them, but um, hopefully we'll be able to get you taken care of. All right, ready to begin. Again, my name is Amy Cole. I worked for about eight years as a project manager for a digital media and web design company. And um, this is some information that I've gathered over the course of time to use social media for extension use. It's really different using it for public sector versus private sector. So um, this is just some starting out. Why we use social media is, uh, it's really different for everybody, but most of it is keeping in touch. We are social animals, and so we wanna make sure that we keep in touch with friends and family, filling up spare time. Everybody else is on it, so there's a lot of reasons that people use social media, and this is just some of the reasons why. As of September last year, and so this is old information from, uh, from for about social media, because uh, again, it changes really quickly, but 71% of people who are just online in general, not everybody is online, so of the people online, 71% use Facebook. It is a huge audience, um, and then Twitter and Instagram. So we have a lot of new people adopting that as well too. Uh, determining your audience is a huge thing. You wanna find out before you start a social media platform, what is their general age? Uh, are they male or female? More predominantly, where do they live? Are they rural? What content do they want to get online? And what uh, do they do for fun? Is, are, are they doing something for fun that you can help them with? Maybe it's gardening. Um, really, what makes them tick? So you wanna understand your audience before you go out and spend a lot of time starting one of these social media platforms. So again, most people are on social media for fun. They're not really there to find out the, all the little uh, information going on that we have. Maybe it's some of our information isn't that fun for them to know, but um, we can make it fun. So how can we make it ex our extension efforts a conversational? What makes it, uh, what do we do? We're doing a lot of things out there, research, what makes us unique that can be a conversation, that can be uh, interesting to people, depending on how we present it. Um, what questions can we answer? That's a huge thing. And then what service, this is a big one, what service do we and only we at Extension provide, uh, especially free? And so these are the kind of things that you want to think about when you're using a social media platform, how you get in front of them is key. So um, looking at the information about social media across the entire adult population um, of, of people just generally, 49% uh, are on Instagram now, and that's a younger audience. So no matter what you're selling though, most people are on Facebook. So you're more likely to find a new audience on Facebook. So if you're not on Facebook, especially for your business or for your organization, uh, that's probably an audience that you're missing out on. You wanna set goals. After you've chosen your social media platform, 
Maybe you think, okay, maybe I, I, my audience probably on Twitter or probably on Facebook. You want to set a goal before you do anything. And I get, like to use the SMART plan. This is a plan that's been around for a couple of decades, actually. So the SMART plan is an acronym. You want to be specific. Um, you want to be really specific about your goals in social media. So for example, I would like to increase our video shares on Facebook, not just people watching the video, the people sharing it. So you need to be very specific about that and uh, where, why, and which you want to be very specific because that's going to help you then measure it. You want to measure what's happening. You want to start with a baseline. So say last month we had 2% of people shared our videos is it realistic that we can, are going to choose 8% the next month? I don't know. You want to look at your stats. It's going to be different from ours. Compare a video's performance um, on more than one channel. You can do video. Um, you can actually do video on Snapchat, but you can do video on Instagram, 15-second videos. It might get 50 likes on Instagram, but only a couple of views on Facebook. So that really is going to think about what your content is in those videos. Um, is it attainable? Again, you need to check your past performance and then set your goal. Is it realistic? Um, is it relevant? Is what we're putting out there relevant to people? Is it relevant to what we're doing at Extension? And is it going to be important for somebody to know and then share that information on Facebook? You can look at your Google Analytics and see how much traffic is coming from social media to your site. Um, this Google Analytics is important because it shows you, uh, if you're sending people to your website, you want to make sure that um, that your social media efforts aren't in vain, that you're actually getting an uptick in audience from social media. And then finally, time. I have a personal goal for our Facebook page to get 2,000 likes to increase our fan base basically on uh, before the end of the year. It's a very, I think that's an attainable goal. We have almost, um, we have over 1,700 now. So by the end of the year, I think that's a little conservative, but I think we can do it based on the information that I have from our past performance. So if you want to improve your reach and gain a bigger, bigger audience, I'm going to go uh, social media by social media. So we're just going to cover everything we can with Twitter first, and then we're going to go into Facebook and others. So becoming an expert in Twitter. Twitter has been around for several years, but the main thing you want to do in Twitter is provide shortened links. So if you're going to have somebody do something in social media, you want to give them a call to action. And in Twitter, um, you want to have a bit.ly or, or short link because then you can send people to more information. You only have 140 characters in Twitter, so you wanna make sure that you connect with people, and 92% of all interaction on the platform includes a link. So um, it's, this is what we use, this is called Bitly. You can, it's a free account. You can customize your links. I usually do UAEX, because that's our domain, so I'll do Bitly slash UAEX, and this one was uh, one for drones. We had a drone post that actually did really pretty well. You can go back and check all of your clicks for any of those links, which ones and then from the Bentleys, you can actually see the engagement rate based on the, the topic. So um, we have uh, some of these are actually from presentations that I've done, but sugarcane aphids, they got 12 clicks. Um, the flood recovery only got one click. So you can kind of see the different audiences and what they're responding to in the social media platforms. The best days to send tweets, again, it depends on your audience. If you're a B2B, business to business person, you're trying to reach out to professionals, that's gonna be the work week. B business to consumer, people are still on Twitter. If they're on Twitter and they're using it, they're there on the weekends. So you wanna make sure that you find out based on your audience, you can go back and look at analytics, find out when your audience is on, on, on these social networks, specifically Twitter, and find out um, which ones of your tweets are gonna respond better or get the better responses. Um, this is a good graphic. So 1.7 million tweets. And um, so we've got tweets for retweeting. Retweeting is a big thing between 10 and 11 PM. That's Eastern time. Again, that depends on your audience. You've got a Twitter audience out there that are typically more news junkies. They're more in, in, interested in uh, of the moment kind of information. So if you're, we have a lot of ad guys uh, specifically here on, on Twitter because it's very day to day, sometimes hour by hour, what the weather's doing, how growing conditions are. So a lot of our ag agents are on Twitter and they've been really successful about that. Um, you wanna interact with your followers. You wanna make sure that you've got uh, responses to tweets, answers, Q and A really fast. Um, and so you wanna make sure you use actionable words. This isn't just in Twitter, but this is everywhere. You wanna have download this, view this, check this out, read more. Anything that you can tell people to do, it's gonna get more interaction on your tweeting. So you wanna have, um, you can increase your clicks by an average of 13%. 
um, just by using an action word. And this goes for actually websites too. We always call it a call to action on our website, um, adver uh, advising that we would do for people, for clients. Give them a call to action, tell them what you want them to do. And then you can promote others in Twitter. If you've got colleagues on Twitter, you can uh, reach out to them and then share information that way as well. And you can get a bigger, more engaged audience that way. Again, ask for it. You can ask for a retweet. You can actually spell out the word retweet and get uh, 12 times more retweet rates. Um, so if you spelled out, you get 23 times, but if you just say RT, uh, you're gonna have 12 times more uh, retweeting. So people ask for it all the time. It's less so on Facebook. Um, it's In Facebook, you wanna have people do what they wanna do, but Twitter's a little bit of a different audience. So Twitter, they're there quick. They're reading it fast. Tell them what to do and they'll generally do it. So you can also do hashtags. Hashtags are huge on Twitter. They typically say two to three hashtags per tweet. Any more than that, it's getting a little bit much. And also you're, you only have 140 characters to do it. Uh, search for your hashtags in your industry. You wanna search for them and find out if they're actually viable hashtags or if they're resonating with people. It, it's pointless to use a hashtag that nobody's really searching for, at least on Twitter. Um, and tweets that top out at about 110 characters actually are more engaging and get uh, more responses than longer ones. I don't know why they don't just cut it down to 110 characters, but um, that actually get even harder to do in Twitter. Um, and also nobody wants to read anymore. So you wanna make sure you have photos. We have a lot more engagement with photos. Um, in video links, you can see the difference between uh, images versus just text only tweets. It's a huge difference. And so always have photos. People are very visual these days and they have very short attention spans. So um, if you can put in 110 characters, what you want them to do, and then throw in a picture, that's even better. Twitter analytics, uh, sorry, analytics. Um, this is our, this is my personal uh, Twitter analytics page. Um, I'm not on Twitter as much. I do a lot of retweeting and I share with Mary Hightower. She's our director of communications here. And I retweet with her and she's really main, or mainly our Twitter person. I'm more of our Facebook person, but you can find out your impressions. Um, you can pay for this kind of stuff, but Again, it, with extension, we don't always have a budget for ads and things like that. So just building your audience on Twitter is, is a really big thing. If you've got a loyal following, if they see you as an expert, they're gonna start following you and they're gonna start sharing uh, or retweeting and sharing your information. So that's really what I, you know, it takes a little while to get that organic following going, but it's worth it in the end. So a little bit more information, Twitter considers all interactions with a tweet as engagement. So this is important to know because um, you know you want to find out what does it mean by engaging in Twitter? Well, doing anything, liking it, sharing it, um, you know, as far as starring it, favoriting it, and then um, direct messaging, all of these are interactions. You can export your data uh, via an API to a CSV file so you can store that information if you're looking to have reporting on any kind of activity you've got. Um, you can sort your followers by gender, by location, and then you can start really targeting your tweets a little bit more. Um, there's a little export data button right there. So there's a lot of data going on in Twitter. It's more straightforward than it is on some of the other social networks. And I really like that analytics has, uh, the analytics have improved. Um, another thing that's relatively new is you can now add multiple photos in Twitter. It used to be you can only add one, but now you can have like four or five. You can have a whole album in Twitter. Um, Twitter, the demographics excuse a more male than female, but probably somebody, one of our ad guys said it's because guys don't like to talk that much. And so they really, really want to keep it short and simple. And I don't know if that's true, but he said it worked for him and all of his ad guys are on there and they're really just shortened to the point. So 37% of, of adults, 18 to 29, it is a younger audience as most social networks are. Um, it's a little bit, it's more urban than rural. But again, our ad guys are sort of, sort of uh, part of that 17% that are rural because they're out there in the fields, literally, and they're tweeting to each other. And it's more of a news uh, tech savvy, news junkie kind of people who are on Twitter. I find out a lot of it really breaking news on Twitter. That, that happens quite a bit. So the answer is, uh, should you be on Twitter? If you want to think about it, if, you're, if you have a tech savvy, info junkie type um, audience, so really think about your audience. I would not bother to get on Twitter unless you know a lot of your clients are on Twitter. If you're actually gonna reach people on Twitter, it, just because it's there doesn't mean you have to be on it. So it's topical, it's timely. It is, uh, people are probably gonna be following you for the latest and greatest information because you are gonna be the um, 
if you're say if you're an agent you're going to have the most up-to-date information they're going to follow you again that's why our ag guys are on it and they've been really really very successful um so facebook the big one so i wanted to cover twitter first because i didn't want to leave it out because it is important but facebook is uh clearly where most of you all are and that's where i am and that's where most of my family is and that's where billions of people are so we wanted to make sure we covered facebook thoroughly um, it skews more female that's not really too much of a surprise um, it is about sharing and socializing so this is very important that people um, keep in touch this way Despite all of the information you may have heard, its youthful base does remain strong. Um, as you can see, 18 to 29, 87% uh, are on Facebook still. It is across the board pretty even, urban versus rural. Again, it's a very um, even-based platform, and you can see the, the lower-income people, even high-income people, they're all on Facebook, educated, uneducated. Um, I just know that my niece, for example, she's 22, and she's still on Facebook. She does get on there. She actually has a little business she runs off of Facebook too. So she is she has not abandoned it completely. So the Facebook data shows that the 18 to 24 year old is still the biggest demographic using the site. You can see the huge number of people, adults 18 to 29 using Facebook. And, and as, as we get a little bit older in the demographics, it does uh, lessen a little bit, but still, uh, there are, you know, grandmas and grandpas getting on Facebook all the time. It's sometimes the only way they can see pictures of their grandkids, I've heard. So this is a really good one to be on if you're really trying to reach a target audience. Again, remember, they're there to socialize. They're there to keep in touch with people that they, um, that they want to keep in touch with. And getting your information in the news feed is going to be key. So the income level is huge. Um, I thought this was very important to, I almost left out this slide and then I thought, no, I'm going to keep it in there because income level is huge. If you've got like a snap, snap ed audience, um, if they're lower income, if you've got people who are out there who are again, rural and they don't have any really good way to get out legitimate information, this is a great way that you can keep in track, keep in touch with them and post information that they're going to find useful. So um, I just wanted to throw in here the numbers, the base behind, the, uh, the demographics for the, uh, the income level. Like I said, I almost left it out and I thought this might be useful to some people, so I wanted to leave it in there. So should you be on Facebook? If you don't mind competition, competition is huge on Facebook. Facebook has changed its newsfeed algorithm and engagement rates and things like that. It changed it just more recently in April, hugely to, um, I don't wanna say, punish business pages, but it is harder and harder for businesses to get found in the newsfeed. We'll talk about that here in a minute. So the reason is they want you to pay them. Facebook is out to make money, just like every other business out there. And it is free to have an account, but if you are a business, you really, if you have a way to have a budget for it, I suggest you try, I've not tried it because we don't have a budget for it here, but paid advertising is the way of the future in Facebook. And so what can you do without a budget for Facebook ads? Well, we've tried several things here and a few things have been very successful. So I wanted to share those with you today. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say this word a lot, engaging. You wanna engage your target audience. Going back to that, give them a call to action. Tell them what you want them to do. And um, you know, some people might think it's being a little bossy, but you, they're there, they're, they're you know, looking at pictures of their friends and family. And if they see your story come up in newsfeed, and you need to tell them what you want them to do. Otherwise, they're just gonna pass by it and they're not gonna engage with you at all. So you need to know about what Facebook calls the engagement rate. So it makes understanding the success of a post a little bit um, quicker. Uh, so Facebook calculates the official engagement rate with this fun graphic here. And, and if you like math, go for it, but it really is a basic uh, number of shares, clicks and likes divided by the number of people that you can that you're actually going to be able to reach that's why i want to increase our fan base to 2000 because that gives us a bigger audience in which to reach people um, there is an algorithm called the newsfeed algorithm in facebook specifically it likes posts with comments and links these are all pretty self-explanatory trending topics if there for example is an e coli outbreak you want to get in on that if people are talking about it on Facebook, you see that little trending topics thing over there on the right side of your um, news page and uh, link post link to your website. Tell them what you want them to do. Drive traffic to your website. We call it web centric traffic um, videos uploaded to Facebook that are native. I'm going to cover that here in a little bit. Um, Facebook 
wants to take a bite out of Google, who owns YouTube, and they want you to post your videos directly to Facebook. They don't want you to use uh, YouTube links anymore. Um, post that tag other pages. If you've got another county that is doing a, a similar program, you, you want to share that audience and engage with another. I, I link to our, um, I tag our uh, 4-H all the time. We're doing our state Rama this, this week. And um, I've had a lot of success tagging the livestock and the 4-H uh, pages as well. Um, pages with complete profile information. If you set up your profile and you haven't gone in and put your business hours, put in keywords about your organization, put in links to your website, if that's all blank, that that is not gonna be as successful as if you do go out and fill out all of that information. Um, post from pages where the fan bases overlap. So if I've got an audience, a lot of our followers are master gardeners. So I go in there and I share information about master gardener program. Master gardeners in Arkansas are all over Facebook. So those posts are usually really very successful. Images and videos that haven't previously shown up. So if you're sharing a post from somebody else, what I've noticed is our shared posts don't go over quite as well as if we make a, a, a native post or a new creative post on our own. Um, improving organic reach in Facebook. This has been tricky. There's been a lot of tips and I've tried just about all of them. So I'm going to share with you some of our success stories. So uh, my background is also in graphic design. So I created this graphic. Um, one of our agents gave me um, a pretty sad looking handout, but it had great data in it about how much a bale of cotton can produce. And so you, people walk around wearing cotton clothes or uh, you know anything their bed sheets are made out of cotton they don't really know how much is in a bale of cotton or how much we produce in Arkansas specifically um, these numbers have changed a little bit since I made this graphic but you can see how many people have shared it our agents love this kind of graphic because again people are uh, short attention spans you, if you can cram stuff into these image memes I highly recommend you try and do it there's different ways I did this in Illustrator but there are are ways that you can create these yourself without um, without too much trouble. I just like the state of Arkansas outline because it talks about Arkansas without having to say the word Arkansas because it's kind of a longer word. And then I created a bit.ly at the bottom of if you see that, but UAX Cotton, and I had some really good interaction with that page from that. So is it useful? You want to publish evergreen content. So what I say by evergreen is this data is maybe a little old, but still it's going to be impactful for people six months from now if they find it on Facebook. So it's going to show up again and again in people's news feeds, potentially. Um, this was the biggest post um, we have ever made. This is about the emerald ash borer. I don't know if the emerald ash borer has made it to your state. I'm sorry if it has. But it will kill uh, ash trees, every ash tree is susceptible to it. And it is an invasive species from China. I could talk to you a little bit about it because I learned all about it from our specialists. But um, I just made a post. She came in last week and she said, oh, my gosh, we have three more counties that have been confirmed in, with it. So can you please post this on Facebook? Well, I thought, well, what's the best way to do it? I told people, don't move your firewood. That is a huge thing. So don't move your firewood from one county to the other because then that firewood could, could have the, um, the little buggers in it. And when you move it, all of a sudden it's in another county. So we tell people all the time, don't drag your firewood with you. Don't get firewood from you know some other state even. Just try to get it local if you can. And this post, as you can see, had 151 shares. Um, this was, I think, early on, um, but it started with 151 shares. And here is where it ended up. Uh, it ended up actually with uh, 411 shares. The 151 shares was within a few hours. This was after about a week. This was, uh, I think yesterday I got this slide. So 411 shares, we reached 48,000 people with this post. I did not pay a cent for this post. So this was just people going in and tagging their friends in the comments. You want to have a lot of comments as well. This um, got some people talking. It was like, is this an emerald ash borer? I've never seen it. And then our specialist said, you won't ever see it because it's about that big. It's smaller than a nickel. It's very, very tiny. And the, um, the bugs aren't the problem. It's the larvae that eat everything. So anyway, she said, you won't see it. So this is a good education post that is evergreen. And again, this went on and on. I guess the best thing I can call it is viral because it went viral within just a few matter of a few hours because people wanted to share information. They wanted to be helpful. Um, so you want to post quality and not quantity. Um, it's hard for, for me because I post for the entire extension. So I do 4-H and I do business and I do ag and everything. And so I try to cover as many topics as I can. So it's hard to just keep it to two to three posts. 
Um, but you want to go ahead and try to mix and match links, photos, and videos. But you also want to know what's working well for you already. So if two or three posts a day is working great, if five posts a day is working great, don't change that. They, um, they say twice per day is ideal. Some say just mix and match a photo or a video or share, things like that. So you just want to play around with it. It's always changing. So what worked today might not work in a couple of months anyway. Um, and so you can see the types of posts that we make, our video posts and our service announcement posts there, as you can see, got, got a lot more interaction. And so this is, you can go into insights and find out all this information. You can target your posts in Facebook. Um, if anybody hasn't tried that yet, I'd be interested to know if anybody has success with that. Um, I've tried it. I think our fan base is a little too small still to do that, but you have eight options to target gender, relationship, status, education. I've tried this based on interest. So I saw so like I did a, a gardening post once and I targeted just people who had uh, gardening as one of their interests and it did okay. Um, but you can do some A-B testing. So you can maybe make a post on a Monday about gardening and then the next week try it again and see if you can target your post and see how it does. And really it's not so much the number of likes as it is the number of people who are engaging with it and commenting on it. That's more important than anything. You can uh, schedule posts for off-peak hours and I found this to be pretty successful. So if you go in, schedule a post to go live at say two or three in the morning, it's going to pop up on people's news feeds early on. As soon as they open up Facebook, your, your, your post is going to have more, um, a chance, more of a chance to get in front of people on their, on their uh, news feeds. Um, and you can go in easily and schedule posts. I do this all of the time. In fact, I did this before I went on vacation and I scheduled a post to go out even on over 4th of July. And so that, that actually still did really well. Um, oh, backing up one thing, don't schedule your posts through a third party app like Hootsuite or anything like that. Facebook knows and Facebook doesn't want you to do that. Facebook wants you to get into Facebook and schedule posts in Facebook. So while you can schedule things using a third party app, I recommend that you go ahead and use Facebook to schedule your posts. Um, best days of the week to post in Facebook for us, Sundays are not great, but Wednesdays for some reason do really well for us. And, um, and they say typically also Fridays rule on Facebook. People are on Facebook for fun again. And so Fridays they're on there, lots of comments, interaction and likes. This has been across the board. I've seen this stat in several different, um, or, uh, business publications and so this is pretty solid information and our Friday posts do really well as well uh, too. So Sunday is the uh, least likely day to receive comments or interaction on a post and I have found that hands down that is that is very true for our, our audience as well. Um, so you want to carefully choose your content types. Videos, uh, if you're not making videos go ahead and start. Use your phone, use an iPhone, use whatever phone, use your tablet, create a video because if you take that video and you upload it to Facebook directly and natively, Facebook is gonna push it out in more people's news feeds than any other content type. They changed this in April. They, they um, like I said, wanna take a bite out of Google and they wanna be the place where you have your, you can have a playlist in, in uh, Facebook, you can have featured videos, and it doesn't have to be a long video. 30 seconds is about the time span that people um, their interactions like, oh, wow, they'll watch it for a little bit. And if it's fun and engaging, that's great. It doesn't, ha that doesn't matter if it's like handheld or anything. It does not matter the quality. They just want to know the information. And like I said, videos are huge. Um, this is a video that I did before presentation. This was like two days after Facebook changed its algorithm. And I uploaded this what we do video that our communications department um, put out. It was about a four minute video and instantly it started getting shares. Within an hour, it had about 10, 15 shares. As you can see, we had uh, oh, oh, about 18,000 people ultimately reached. You can see the data that I had on this. You can go in and find out how many people bailed on your video, when they bailed. This is all the kind of information that YouTube gives you as well. But Facebook wants to give it to you too. So according to industry experts, by 2020, mobile video traffic will grow by 55% per year. That's people on their phones, they're on their tablets watching video. I don't know if you've been on your Facebook feed, but the videos seem to just pop up everywhere. They're going to get shown a lot quicker than anything else. And so, so remember, your audience is probably, especially if they're younger, they're not on a desktop computer, they're on their phones and, and uh, tablets. How-to videos. This is a great video that 
our water quality specialist did. He's from uh, Washington County in, here in Arkansas, and he has a grant actually to make these podcasts. And this one got a really pretty good interaction. We had some, uh, as you can see, 15 shares. I used the recipes that he did in this video, and they're really great, um, and they're very water and eco-friendly. So these are the kind of things that you could be doing. Um, this one looks a little bit more professional because he has the, the text on top, but you really don't even have to get that fancy with it. But there are softwares out there that you can make. Um, one's called Cute Cut. And I think it's just a few dollars. It's an app on, um, I think on iPads. And I've had some people say they, they were really successful with those videos too. So some final thoughts about Facebook. Um, it does not like uh, free promotion. It was a, a gravy train for many years. It is not anymore. So you need to think about how to get creative with your posts. Create killer content. Your content is key, not only on social media, but on your website as well. Uh, you need to look at the insights every day and then and then track the effectiveness of your posts and it's it's going to give you feedback your facebook page will give you some feedback about which ones are performing and they're going to really encourage you to boost your posts as well all the time build a community make sure that you're the center of that community and then you're there as the central um you know in, in the hub of the wheel as it were and make sure that you're the expert giving out relevant information and don't be lazy um, update fairly regularly don't start a facebook page and then leave it hanging i mean i wouldn't even say once a day is the bare minimum you would want to post on Facebook. Um, you want to tweet a lot more often than that. But as far as Facebook goes, we post at least two to three times a day if you can. At least quality posts are going to be better than quantity, though. Uh, Facebook analytics. You're going to want to look at the insights, see what types of posts are working. Um, reach is the number of users who saw it in the first place. Engaged users are the number of unique people who have clicked on it. And then talking about this, what are people talking about? Is it something, again, like that trending topic? So you want to go in and try and find out what people are interested in talking about that day. Um, and external refers, how many people came to your page from a website or another Facebook page. So you just want to see what kind of posts are working for you. I do this all the time. And like I said, um, the video posts are huge. After I posted that em Emerald Ash Borer, it was a link post with photos, and now these results are a little bit different. So photos are also still pretty good, um, pretty big, and again, link posts are good if you want to send people to your website for um, downloading files and things like that. Um, all right, so moving on really quickly to Instagram. I love Instagram. I've used it personally for several years, and it's a lot of fun. But is your audience on Instagram? I don't know. Are they? Uh, if you've got a youth, again, a youth-based audience, the largest population uh, of young users when compared to Facebook or Twitter, these people are young. Um, by young, I mean younger than me. Uh, they're typically a little more urban than rural, but that doesn't mean that you don't have an audience out there. If you do have a rural audience, they have beautiful imagery um, that they can be taking pictures of. As you can see, the age range is a lot younger. Um, a lot more women than men are on Instagram as well. And this is a photo I took of one of our agents, Stuart Runsick. He was in a field and he got, uh, I posted, you know, he got photo bombed by a cicada. We had the cicadas were out this year in full force. Everybody could hear them. And so one, it was actually relevant for a couple of reasons because he's in the field literally and there's a cicada flying through. So that was a fun post to make. And I posted that on Instagram and it posted to our business page on Facebook. Um, and you want to make sure that 28%, again, uh, users live in urban areas, but um, there are suburban areas and then rural. So you want to make sure that your, uh, that your audience is actually on Instagram. Again, if they're older, um, if they're not really image in, you know, interested, then I wouldn't really bother with an Instagram account. But again, there's no reason you can't start it and see what kind of users you get. You can get a lot of interaction on Instagram. So should you be on Instagram? Yes, if you take really good photos and then quality pictures matter. Hashtags matter hugely on Instagram. You can have as many hashtags as you want. There really is no limit to the number of hashtags you can have on Instagram. Facebook, I'd say avoid them, and you wanna have about two or three on Twitter. But the audience, again, on Instagram, very young, very uh, used to hashtags. You can have fun hashtags and creative hashtags um, on Instagram. And a few more facts, it has a much higher engagement rate. So people can engage directly with their followers on Instagram. More than any other channel, people are engaging on Instagram. So the Instagram's engagement rate, it outstrips Facebook, Twitter, or Pinterest. That is, people 
commenting, interacting directly with uh, the, the business. And due to uh, faster than expected growth, it surpassed Twitter, become the second, um, second largest social network in the US. And the gap between users uh, will continue to widen. So you wanna make sure that if your audience is on Instagram, you may as well just try it out. It's again, not that hard to use and people are very visual. They want to see things. They can come to Instagram and see exclusive content. This is the kind of thing you want to show on Instagram. You can do 15 second videos, a quick how to video of how to properly measure flour in a cup, you know, tap it down, make sure you're doing it right. Um, one little demo. We had one uh, agent shucking corn and I, uh, he sent it to me and I put it on uh, Facebook but it would have been a really good one to have. Uh, here's the proper way to, to uh, take the husk off your corn. And it was actually really an interesting video. It took about 15 seconds. And so those kind of how to's are great. Behind the scenes tips, things that we're getting ready here for the state Orama, the photos that you're not sharing on Facebook and Twitter. Um, that's, those are the kind of things you want to share on Instagram. Funny, relatable, again, how to videos. Uh, if you get a new program or service, if you want to announce that, if you've got 4-Hers, if you're in 4-H, a behind the scenes from 4-H shows or competitions would be great. Um, anything intended for a younger audience or females. Uh, cooking, I think, is huge on Instagram. I don't know how many pictures of plates of food I've seen on Instagram, but there's a lot. Um, so there's really great things that you can do with Instagram specifically. And again, know your hashtags. They should be used regularly, effectively. Uh, five to seven key industry hashtags. Uh, we use things like AR, our agent, farming, agriculture. I throw in Arkansas in there all the time. If people are searching for Arkansas topics, uh, food safety, nature, corn. Um, you just go into, ha into Instagram and do a search and you can find a whole bunch of information. Uh, really beautiful photos of like cornfields and things like that. So uh, highly popular tags. Uh, so you can, there's actually things called hashtagify me. There's places that you can go to search for hashtags and find out if they're actually relevant. So this is our Instagram page. You can see I'm, I created that image right there with the Arkansas. Uh, we have a, a avian flu thing happening right now and it's actually across the nation. So I created this image to, to get the word out there uh, I posted this to Instagram and immediately shared on Twitter and Facebook. It's had about 13 shares on Facebook so far. I just posted a few days ago. These are pictures also from our 4-H estate Arama. Uh, we have a corn verification specialist that is very uh, photo heavy. He sends me pictures every day and we had a lot of good interaction with these photos. You can see a video down there in the bottom left that we took at our social media advanced uh, class the other day. We had our team doing the wave there. So this, this is the kind of thing people uh, photos, I don't think I have that in here, but uh, photos with people in them get about 30% more engagement than any other type of photo. So you want to have people in there. Um, this is Instagram itself does not have analytics. So you want to use something like a Kana Square. This is something I use for, for my, this is my personal account right here. You can see, um, you know, who followed you, unfollowed you, which times of day are best for you to post. Um, you can search hashtags. These are all my followers on, on my Instagram account. Um, I like I said, I hashtags are a huge way to get new followers. I, I post a lot about running and things like that, so I have some people on there that that follow me for those hashtags. Uh, final thoughts about Instagram: you can express through visuals. So anything that you can do, a picture's worth, I say, a thousand words. So you want to find your audience though before building a strategy. You want to go out there and see what your competitors are doing. If anybody's out there, if you've got other people out there doing it successfully, find out what they're doing and then just follow their lead. Become hashtag savvy. Again, you wanna investigate hashtags before you start using a lot. Explore the platform uh, to generate some new ideas. Go in, start an account, look around, see what, see what engages you and then see if you can do something like that for your page. Um, and then get social and interact. You can, um, you can do the at symbol and tag other people. Uh, I tag our Arkansas 4-H people and our Arkansas livestock people. And um, it's been really pretty, pretty successful. We just started a couple of months ago. I, I forget how many followers we have. Um, but anyway, you can have a lot of information also in your um, bio. I think it's only about 140 characters also in your bio. So you have to be really thoughtful about what you put in there. You can even put a call to action. Check out more on our website in your bio so people know where they can find more in, uh, information. So moving on to Snapchat. Snapchat, I am a, I am a newbie with Snapchat because I am just old uh, compared to the people using Snapchat. 
Um, and it is not the most intuitive platform, but again, is this something that we could be using? I have some facts here. What is it? It is a messaging app. So Snapchat is for direct messaging, typically one other person, but you can Snapchat to a bunch of people all at once, put it in your, they call it a story, your, your story, your timeline. Um, you can take photos or videos and um, you can add a doodle or uh, a little, to your phone, you can add a caption or a doodle to it. It's really a lot of fun and trying to find a business application for Snapchat is a little challenging, but a lot of brands have done it. Um, it's a feeling that people have on Snapchat of privacy, being spontaneous, that isn't found anymore on social networks. It used to be Facebook was like that, but now uh, a lot of the younger people, while they still have a Facebook account, they don't necessarily use it for private or fun messaging. They're using Snapchat. So who uses it? The numbers are a little slim, but one image, uh, this was tweeted from BI Intelligence. You can see it is young females using Snapchat, far and away more than anybody else. So it is also um, higher income. These, uh, I guess, young ladies have more money than everybody else. Maybe they've got a lot more time on their hands to take pictures. I don't know, but uh, it is a very young audience where if you're 25 and on Snapchat, you're considered old. That was a really funny, uh, statistic I found. So you can see the gender, the age, and the income, as you can see that is a higher income level for it. And you want to make sure that if you're going to think about using Snapchat, I would recommend it be a way that you communicate probably specifically with your 4-H audience. Um, teen and 20-something users, as you can see, it is a huge growth rate, uh, more as far as because it is a messaging app. Um, it is a feeling of being, again, spontaneous, scandalous a little bit. Um, and then Facebook used to be that way for teens, but it certainly isn't anymore. And it is the anti-Facebook is what they call it now. So um, probably because they made the interaction on this, on this a little bit trickier than anything, um, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Because when I tried using it, it was sort of a disaster at first. But it is less networky and more social, if that makes sense. Um, and so Snapchat recently surpassed Instagram and Tumblr as the fastest growing social app. So um, while Instagram has a much bigger audience and people, um, it is, is, is surpassed Twitter in some degrees, it is still, as far as people adopting it, as far as growth goes, it is huge. So Twitter and um, Facebook uh, are, are not as useful to the youngsters anymore. And uh, this is one that I did, it's my really crappy Snapchat, but this is a picture of uh, I just wanted to have a, a, a sample in here of what I did with it. This is our Land and Life magazine, and you can have a caption in there, and then there is a character limit for that caption. And, but then you can draw with your finger on there, and I just wrote cool dude, and you can change the color of it. It's, it's really a neat way to kind of graffiti over your own photo. And um, you can save it for 10, 2 to 10 seconds, or you can save it to your story, and it's there for about 24 hours. And you can share with one or with many people. And you can also do a direct messaging where you're just chatting with somebody and that chat does disappear, but you can save the conversation too. These people who think that things are not permanent on the internet, even in Snapchat, all you have to do is take a screenshot of it and it is there forever. So just be aware that it also does tell somebody that you took a screenshot of it. Um, but again, this is the reason why it started out as, as really appealing to young people. So, but if you and your friend are in the same time zone, the camera button will turn blue and you can start live chatting with somebody else. Um, this is a little bit.ly link, the beginner's guide to Snapchat I found pretty helpful. So again, the big question is what happens to your snap after it's sent? Their policy says it is of the now and they get rid of it. So um, view to snap, we automatically delete the snap from our servers and our service are programmed to delete the snap. Um, I don't know how much I believe that, I'm sure it is to some degree, but if you don't want your mom to see it, I suggest don't even doing it in the first place. <laughs> That's my rule, because <laughs> you never know where something's gonna end up. Um, so I thought this was a really funny one as far as usability goes for Snapchat. Um, this guy says, am I getting old or does Snapchat need UI or user interaction help? Um, anybody wanna guess how old this guy is? <laughs> He's 26. <laughs> so I'm quite a bit older than this guy, but even he had trouble using it. It is not particularly intuitive. It took me a while of me poking around on the phone and then throwing it down in frustration. And finally I figured out 
oh, okay, these icons mean this and that. I ended up taking a picture of my desk and my lap accidentally. It was crazy. And so then I read a really funny article that this other guy uh, wrote. He said, oh yeah, I had that same trouble. Um, there is a discover feature in Snapchat. Brands are using this quite a bit. Um, you can add your own drawing and text embellishments and send them privately to friends. And those snaps will include sent via Discover banner that users can uh, then click and jump straight to Discover. So if there's an image on a Discover feature, you can have a little banner on there and people can send them. It's just a lot of fun. Snapchat is a lot of fun. Um, if, if I had more friends on there, <laughs> nobody's my age, but um, if I can get more friends on there, I would use it a lot more. And because it is a lot of fun, it's, it's, um, it's, it's very interactive and very fun to use. And so this was in January 2015. They have this, again, this discover feature. You can do this overlay banner. We can do little surveys. Um, you can initiate engagement with it. So you're getting out there directly to people. Uh, I think Taco Bell had a really good uh, Snapchat campaign. So there are different ways you can do promotions and things on Snapchat. Um, I think every edition is refreshed after 24 hours. They do that because uh, the news today is uh, history tomorrow. So they really want to be of the now, which is how the young people uh, want to think about life anyway. So, so thinking about extension, this is, this is a great article I read by Paul Hill from Utah, Utah State University, which got me interested in learning more about Snapchat. Um, as my part of my job is to find out about social media and find out if it's useful for our agents. Um, if we started using the Discover feature, you could share a story about people applying the research-based information from our agents. There's a lot of things you could think about. 4-H made a decision to use the stories, what goes on at Congress or you Science or your state of um, You can see which followers have viewed your photos or videos. Say you've got an announcement about a meeting or something like that, you send it out and you can find, you can get messages instantly, find out if people got it or not. So there, it is a good application, especially if you're trying to get in front of young people, I suggest you might just check it out and ask, ask your 4 hers are you using Snapchat? And if so, um, this might be a great way to get information out there because maybe they don't respond to a text, they can ignore it, but in Snapchat, you can find out if they saw it or not. A few final thoughts. Just remember, it's very personal social network and it's got strong social engagement. It's got engagement built right into it. That's all it's about. Um, you can provide a, a demonstration, how to sneak peek. You can do a new perspective, not typically seen elsewhere. If you want to be a little bit more off the cuff, this would be a great way to do it. Be funny. Um, you want to engage the uh, like an event attendee uh, with inside information. You could do that if you have a big event coming up. There's no current official business options or pages, but I would not be surprised if that, that started pretty soon. Um, there's no insights or analytics yet, but again, um, it's not necessarily for businesses. So reaching your audience, we have some final thoughts and I'm wrapping it up here. So I know we want to have time to have some questions. Um, you want to encourage participation. Tell them what you want them to do. If you're just putting out an announcement out there, what, are they, what do you want them to do with that? No one's going to engage with you on that. That's not going to be any use to anybody. So you want to tell them, call us. Um, do this now. Like I said, if you remember that firewood post, uh, don't move firewood. I put it in all caps and people were like, oh, I didn't know that. And so they wanted to share it with other people. And so that's how we got really good engagement with that. I told them exactly what I wanted them to do and they did it and they shared it and it was really great. So I recommend you also link people over to your website. Don't ever forget about your website because that's where you can track all of this information. Um, that's it. Uh, if you want to find a little bit more information, I don't have a handout today, but I've got um, on my um, Pinterest page, I have this board called Helpful Stuff. And so you can go there to find a lot of the information in infographic form and links to articles that I used uh, to do all this research today.